Welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. I am your host, Alex Bush, and today our topic is getting into how you can approach your fitness journey in the first three months of starting. Oftentimes when individuals are getting into their fitness journey and really trying to make a change in their life and in their overall health, it can be very overwhelming and daunting. They can find themselves in a situation where it is information overload. They are searching all the different topics when it comes to nutrition and training, supplementation and cardio, and they don't know exactly where to start. And with this episode, I want to create a environment or a a list of information, I suppose, that is going to simplify and allow for you to see real progress in the first 90 days of your fitness journey. If you're a fan of the show, this episode is meant for you to share with your friends and family who are trying to get their fitness and their health into alignment. And if you are the friend or family member that's receiving this podcast, this is a great sign that you have someone in your life that really loves you and wants to see better for your overall health and wellness. Before we get into exactly how you can approach your nutrition and your training, your cardio and your supplementation, I think that it's important for us to really outline how we can set the stage best as possible to make this a lasting change and make sure that it's not just something that you start and stop and start and stop again and again. The first thing is making sure that your expectations are in alignment with what is able to be accomplished. There's a common phrase that goes, if you walk into the woods 10 miles, don't expect yourself to get out in five. And what that really means is that if you are someone who has added body fat that is unwanted and you're wanting to see that change or to see that fat loss, you need to understand that it's going to probably take you the same or similar amount of time that it took you to add the body fat that you did. And so do not find yourself in a situation where you're trying to pick quick fixes or situations in which you're seeing lose 20 pounds in 10 days or something ridiculous along those lines. The way that you're going to make real change is being consistent. And the beauty of being consistent is that it does not require you to be perfect. Because if you're striving for perfection, although a great goal to have, it is not likely that you're going to see perfection on a day-to-day basis. And the even more beautiful thing is that you do not have to be perfect to see the results that you want to have. Because as we all have entered into our fitness and wellness journey, messy action is the thing that got us to where we wanted to be. I can think back to many times throughout my fitness journey, especially early on, that I had to take messy action because I did not know exactly what I was doing, but I knew what I wanted to accomplish and I just needed to start. For example, when I got started, I was obsessed with muscular development. It's a magazine. They don't exist anymore. <laughs> they actually, they may exist. It probably is digital. And my grandmother got me this magazine subscription. And I would go into those magazines and cut out different workouts from famous bodybuilders at that time. Now, mind you, I think I am 12, 13, maybe 14 years old at this time. I am trying to follow a workout scheme for a 30 plus year old male who is taking performance enhancing drugs. And I am trying to apply that to my day-to-day training. (laughs) And I can assure you, it did not go super well. I was extremely, extremely sore. I did not see a whole lot of progress and it was far too much for me at that time. But the beautiful thing was, is that it got me started and I was able to recognize of, hey man, (laughs) although it's working for this individual, obviously it's not working for me. And I've got to find a better way to go about getting my training in and seeing the results that I want to have. Another example is that within my nutrition, (laughs) early on, I would do the exact same thing and try to follow a diet that was for someone who was 250 pounds and was eating a copious, and I mean copious amount of total calories, but very much so a copious amount of protein. And at this time, I would say that I am maybe 120 pounds soaking wet. And I'm trying to eat 300 grams of protein. And God bless my mother because she was, <laughs> she wanted me to get stronger. She wanted me to accomplish my goals. And she made sure that I had that 300 grams of protein with my breakfast, with my lunch, with my dinner, making sure that I had them all spread out. And uh, I can assure you that 300 grams was far too much for me at that time. And even now to this day is probably a little bit too much. And I dealt with a considerable amount of digestive stress. My stomach 
stomach constantly hurt, and I don't know if I really digested much of any of that food. But the reality is, is that it got me started, and I'm grateful for that time because I was able to learn and and better understand how my body functions and, and cross one thing off the list so that I can move on to the next. Because the beauty of this fitness journey is that it's for life, and throughout it all, we need to fall in love with the process, and that's really what I want to drive home today is that if we can fall in love with the process, you're going to be able to accomplish whatever the goals that you want to accomplish. Let's kick things off with nutrition because this is probably the most challenging part of really creating change within your lifestyle as well as within your overall health because it can be daunting and you may consume some information online that's around tracking macros and tracking macros is fantastic but it can become daunting because all things can fit and you can eat whatever you want within the constraints of tracking your calories and total macronutrient intake. But if you're just getting started, I actually think that having these targets in place is going to be a negative for you. And the reason being is because of that daunting feeling and feeling very overwhelmed. And so we should simplify it even further and download whatever app you want to utilize to track your macros, MyFitnessPal, MacroFactor, um, Chronometer, what have you, and using this as an education tool for yourself. This is going to be a process. You're going to be learning each and every day. And as I want to continue to reiterate, you're going to be making mistakes and that's okay. So after you download whatever tracking app you're utilizing, you're going to start tracking your nutrition on a day-to-day basis to build an understanding of exactly what you're consuming. Try not to change anything in particular, but we want to build a baseline of exactly where your intake is at currently. I start here because oftentimes individuals will start with a specific macronutrient allotment. And let's say it's 1500 calories, 1600 calories, because they want to lose weight. That's the overarching goal. And they have no idea how much they were eating prior to that. They may have been in a place where they were actually consuming even less calories than that on a more average basis. But on some instances, they were having an excessive level of calories. And so they think that, well, because I'm over consuming so much, starting at 1500 calories is going to certainly allow for me to lose weight. And although you may see that fat loss right off the bat, the reality is, is that where is the sustainability in that approach? You may be able to do it for two weeks, may be able to do it for three weeks, but when we're wanting to see real fat loss, it's going to have to be sustainable for long periods of time. You may see a couple pounds fall off, but then we may find ourselves in a situation where it's no longer, you're no longer able to adhere to that intake. And now we're going back to what our old habits were. By simply having the accountability of tracking your food in an app, it will allow for you to probably eat even less calories than what you normally would. And you may snack a little bit less because you may be a little annoyed to get into that tracking app. And I assure you, it's going to feel a little overwhelming. It's a, a quite a bit of a change from just eating whatever you want. And that's okay. And it's going to get easier as you have more repetitions in tracking your food on a day-to-day basis. So for the first two weeks of tracking your nutrition, all I want you to do is exactly what you have been doing and get an understanding of where those calories fall. At the conclusion of those first two weeks, what I want you to do is utilize the macro calculator that we have at physiquedevelopment.com. Input the information that is asked of you and make sure that you put that you want to be at maintenance calories. The reason I say maintenance calories relative to fat loss, even though your goal is probably to see fat loss, is that we need to understand where those maintenance calories are at. When you go and look at your two-week data collection of where your nutrition was, we need to understand where does that fall in relation to that maintenance calories that the macro calculator is providing for you. Are you under that target intake for the maintenance calories? Okay, we need to build our way up to that maintenance calories that's being given to you so that we're nourishing your body adequately. Oftentimes, individuals are under-consuming calories on a more average basis, putting them in a place of low energy, low motivation, um, high irritability, all these different factors. And so we want to get to a place of where we're nourishing your body. And by nourishing your body, you're going to see the body composition improvements that you want, as well as improved energy, improved training performance, all these different factors that are going to be of positive benefit to the overarching goal that you have of changing your life for the better. 
Now, let's say that your two weeks of tracking is above what the number is given to you of those maintenance calories. This is a time in which we can work our way down to those maintenance calories to get us into a better position within our body composition as well as our day-to-day intake. Now, Alex, how much should I either increase my calories or decrease my calories in relation to those maintenance calories? How many times can I say calories in one sentence? We'll find out by the end of this episode. To make this as simple as possible, we're going to use a 5% increase or decrease depending on where you fell in relation to that maintenance intake. You're going to make a 5% change every 10 to 14 days as you make your way to whatever that maintenance calories would be. Once you get to that maintenance intake, spend about three to six weeks at that intake. And you're probably like, dude, I am trying to make change and you are wanting me to maintain at this current weight. And that is not what this is going to entail because the beautiful thing is, I think everything's so beautiful today. I've said this so many (laughs) times in this episode. The great thing, (laughs) the great thing is that By nourishing your body, your training performance in the gym is going to improve. Your energy throughout the day to accomplish different things around the house is going to improve. Your overall NEAT is going to improve alongside of that. And by doing so, your caloric expenditure on a day-to-day basis is going to elevate. So you may be eating at what your maintenance calories is when we look at the the calculator, but in relation to what your actual expenditure is, we may be seeing body composition improvements and fat loss along that process because we're doing a better job of nourishing our body and recovering from all the different stimulus that we will have throughout the day, whether that be training, walking, whatever the case may be. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Now, when it comes to the specific macronutrients, I don't want you to focus too much on the carbohydrates or specific fats that you're consuming. But one macronutrient that would be helpful for us to have a better understanding of the total quantity that we are consuming is going to be protein. And so each time that we sit down to have a meal, I would encourage you to have 20 to 25 grams of protein per sitting. The reason for this is twofold. The first is that it's going to be very helpful to your overall satiation. The second being that it plays a pivotal role in the muscle recovery from the hard training sessions that you're doing in the gym. And the last thing that I'll say on nutrition is that it may be a good idea for you to add a little bit of fruit and a little bit of vegetables to each meal. You don't have to, you don't have to, but I would encourage it. The next thing is water intake. And this is one that is going to be so stinking helpful to you. And you're going to be amazed by the improvements in your energy, the improvements in the function of your brain, uh, how your how your skin looks, how it how you feel, all these different things. And with water intake, oftentimes individuals immediately go to gotta drink a gallon. And, and, and a gallon is a good reference point, but may honestly be a lot for you depending on where your current at because you may be in a situation and I've had family members I've had this conversation with where uh, we come to find that they really have only drank like 20, maybe 30 ounces of water for their entire day. And so for them to go from a place of 20 to 30 ounces to all of a sudden drinking 128 ounces, which is a gallon of water on a day-to-day basis is ridiculous. And they find themselves living in the bathroom. And each time they sit back down, they're like, oh my gosh, I have to pee again. (laughs) And so if you find yourself in a situation where you're drinking 20 to 30 ounces on a day-to-day basis, let's go ahead and jump to 50. Let's spend some time at 50. Let's say five to seven days. Feel good there. Feel like I'm getting some improvements. It's becoming a little bit better of a habit. Now we jump to 75 and we spend some time there. And then we jump to 100. We still feel good. And then we're doing what I like to call looking at my pee. (laughs) And this is going to help you understand where your hydration levels are at. If we are at a darker yellow coloring, I would say we probably need a little bit more fluids. If we are at a light yellow or clear, we're probably in the clear. So Paying attention there is going to better help you understand where you're at with your overall hydration. And so, yes, a gallon is a good target to have 
but it's not the end all be all. And you may be someone who functions just fine off of 90, 100, maybe even 110 ounces, and you don't have to get to that gallon marker. And here are the best two tips I can provide for you when it comes to water consumption. First is have 20 to 30 ounces of fluids right when you wake up. It is way easier than what you're making out in your mind to be right this moment. Just fill the cup up and throw that thing down. First thing in the morning, it gets you started on a great note. And maybe you're like, dude, 20 or 30 ounces is all I'm drinking right now, as I was telling that story earlier. Okay, start with 10, start with 12. Something that's going to get you started on the right foot first thing in the morning. And then every time that you leave the house or every time that you sit down at your desk, you have a glass or bottle of water with you at all times. There's never going to be a time from here on out that you leave the house without a bottle of water. And there's not ever going to be a time that you sit down at your desk without a glass or bottle of water right by your side. The next focus is daily movement. Now, you're going to see online that there's another standard of 10,000 steps. You've got to get 10,000 steps every day. And again, you're going to need to assess exactly where you've been because getting to 10,000 steps could terrorize your body if you are only consistently getting, let's say, one to maybe 3,000 steps, which I would say for individuals who are not tracking their steps currently and uh, work remote or work at a desk on a day-to-day basis, Basis, they're going to find themselves somewhere in the ballpark of 2,500 to 4,000 steps naturally. And so making the jump from 2,000 to 4,000 steps all the way up to 10,000 on a day-to-day basis is a really big jump. Your ankles are not going to love you. Your knees are not going to love it and certainly not your hips. And so in the instance in which you have a better understanding of where your current steps are at, just as we talked about within nutrition, we've got to understand where our baseline is. Take that first week and just get an idea of really how much you are moving on a day-to-day basis. Try not to change a whole lot organically, you're going to change a little bit because you're more uh, cognizant of exactly where you're at. So you're going to walk maybe a little bit more, but by using that baseline, you'll be able to better understand where you should go moving forward. And so let's say that you do fall at that 4,000 step marker. What I would encourage you to do is increase that by 2,000 steps, get to 6,000, spend two to three weeks at that step allotment and see how you feel. Do you feel like it it is challenging for you to get the walks in? Do you feel um, maybe better, obviously, within your, your body or how your recovery is from training? And probably your digestion is going to be improved as well because you're just getting more movement on a day-to-day basis. And with you feeling good, you may find yourself in a place where I want to bump this up a little bit. Let's try to get to 7,000 and let's try to get to 8,000. And and if you're going to be making increases to that step allotment, give yourself about two, maybe three weeks at that step increment before you make a increase to the total allotment that you get on a day-to-day basis. I would say that the upper limit, and and this is tough to say because some individuals naturally through their work are going to be getting a higher quantity of steps. And when I'm recording episodes like this, it's challenging to try and, and make generalizations on a topic that is so broad. And in this scenario, I would say that if you're someone who is two to 4,000 more naturally on a regular basis, 10,000 is going to be kind of a lot. But if you find yourself in a place where you're way high because you are a nurse or someone who's on their feet all day for work, 10,000 may be a walk in the park. And so I would just pay close attention to your overall recovery, how your body is feeling, how it is impacting your overall schedule. If it's something where your lower body is, is very sore and you're struggling to even find time in your day to get to the total allotment of steps that you have, you may need to make some adjustments to make it more practical and applicable to your day-to-day life. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. And while we're on the topic of movement, we should probably talk about resistance training. And this is one where we could sit and talk for hours of exactly how we could best approach your resistance training to put you in the best place of success. And if you guys would like, maybe we record a separate episode, leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube that you do want to see that, or there will be a link in the show notes possibly (laughs) for you to let us know that that's what you want to hear. But 
On the topic of resistance training, what I will encourage is to understand where you're coming from. Do you see a theme here? This is a consistent theme um, throughout all these different variables of understanding where you're at relative to just taking something that someone advises and says, okay, I'm doing that specifically. We need to know where you're at. So if you're in a place where you haven't resistance trained in six, nine, 12 months, getting into the gym four or five times a week is going to be terrible. Ah, terrible could be a strong word, but it's going to be very challenging for your body and you're going to be very beat down. You're going to be very sore and you may find yourself in a position where throwing in the towel is a lot easier. And so if you're coming from a place of not training at all, maybe we start with two days a week and we go in with a full body approach and we have a great training plan that is going to allow for us to target all muscle groups and then we're able to nourish our body from a nutritional perspective. And then as we get more acclimated to the two resistance training sessions, then over, let's say we do that for four weeks, then at the conclusion of the four weeks, we add a third day and we continue with the full body approach and spend some time there maybe for eight weeks. And then we continue to incrementally get to the place that we want to of the frequency in which we're training. And you may be thinking, Alex, I I want to get into the gym, but I don't know how to even write a full body training program, or I don't even know like if I feel comfortable in the gym, all these different things. And I want to provide a free resource for you that is three full body training sessions in the show notes below or in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. With this program, you can use all three days, or if you're wanting to just go to the gym one time or two times, you can use one or two of those sessions and continue to repeat those training sessions over the duration of four, eight, or even 12 weeks. I want to really drive home following the same exercises throughout your training as you get back into the gym, because it is very easy and probably more exciting to get on Instagram and look at swipe workouts or look at short form content and be like, I'm going to do that workout today. And as fun as that may be, you're not going to see the progress that you actually want to have because where you're going to find that progress is consistently doing the same movements over time, increasing the weight that you're lifting, getting better at the movement pattern itself to see the improvements in muscle density, as well as overall muscular strength. And the final thing I'll say when it comes to resistance training is that utilizing the physique development YouTube channel as a reference point for all of the exercises that you're wanting to perform will be a tremendous help. We have hundreds of videos going in detail on how to perform each and every exercise that you will find in that three-day full body program. And the final topic for us to chat on today is going to be supplementation, which may have been the first thing that you jumped at when you wanted to make the change in your overall health and wellness. And supplements are going to play about a one <laughs> one to 5% improvement in your overall health and wellness when it comes to the grand scheme of things, the, the daily movement, the resistance training, the nutrition, uh, your sleep, water consumption. Those are going to be the tools that you really use to make a real difference in your life. The supplementation is going to amplify those things just a little bit. It's gonna turn the knob just a little bit more, but it's not going to be the deciding factor of success or not having success. And so when it comes to supplementation, when starting your fitness journey, there are going to be a couple of products that I would recommend as more of a foundational piece to your fitness journey. The first being, I like to have a quality multivitamin in place. And the reason for this is that it gives us a foundational amount of different vitamins and minerals that are going to be very important to the internal function of our body that we may not be getting through our dietary intake. And as we progress forward and we get better within the whole foods that we're consuming meal after meal, and we're getting more vitamins and minerals through our diet, at that time, it may be useful for us to discontinue the use of the multivitamin as a supplement. But as we're getting started and we don't have those whole foods on a consistent basis and the quantity of vitamins in our dietary intake, it's going to be in our best interest to supplement with a multivitamin at that time. The second is going to be a quality fish oil. Now, fish oil is going to be a quantity of essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids are going to be a tremendous aid in our overall internal function when it comes to brain health, eye health, skin health. Many different things are going to be impacted positively by the essential fatty acids that we're consuming. 
And if we're not getting much through our dietary intake, it is going to be in our best interest to supplement with those essential fatty acids. As you progress through your health journey and you start to maybe consume more fish in your day-to-day diet to get those essential fatty acids through your food, it's going to be in your best interest to supplement with the omega-3s until that time. And the third product is going to be a magnesium supplement. And I I will also say that these are the three products that I forced my parents to take. Um, I have it sent to their house and I double check with them very consistently that they are taking their multivitamin, their fish oil, and their magnesium. And the reason for the magnesium is that magnesium is so essential within many different internal functions when it comes to muscle contractions, muscle relaxation, and when it comes to stress, and all of us are, are experiencing some level of stress throughout our day. Stress is going to deplete magnesium stores. And I think the statistic is like 80% of Americans are deficient in magnesium. And so it is very important for us to supplement with magnesium as we can get it through our diet, but there are not a ton of foods that you will eat on a day-to-day basis that gets you the quantity that is necessary. And when you go into your local supplement store, you're going to see so many different forms of magnesium. You're going to see magnesium citrate. You're going to see magnesium oxide. Um, (laughs) You're gonna see so many different forms. The one that I'm going to recommend to you is magnesium glycinate. Magnesium glycinate is the highest absorption form through research that they have found to have an impact on cellular health relative to the GI tract because there are going to be different forms of magnesium that are going to act as more of a stool softener than actually impacting cellular health. So if you're wanting to not have to run directly to the bathroom, and I'm not saying if you take magnesium citrate or magnesium oxide, you're immediately going to have to go to the restroom. But what I'm saying is that we want to have the greatest impact on overall cellular health and the magnesium glycinate is going to be the best way to go ahead and do that. So if I was to be starting my fitness journey in 2024, this is exactly how I would do it. My first focus would be messy action. Just get started and get in the trenches of making the change in my life, which that is going to lead me to being consistent. And being consistent is king when trying to make a real change in our lives when it comes to health and wellness or really any topic within our life. When it comes to nutrition, training, supplementation, cardio, we want to walk before we sprint. Understand where your baseline of all these different topics are at at this current moment before digging into making a real change of going to the gym more frequently, eating more nutrient-dense foods, walking more. These are going to be great tools for you to make that change, but we need to understand where you're coming from before trying to implement the change. Next is understanding our baseline. We need to be able to walk before we run and what gets tracked gets managed. And so the more awareness that we can create around the different facets within our overall wellness, the better off that we're going to be of making the steps necessary to make the change that we want to see. And I would be okay with making mistakes because it is inevitably going to happen. There are going to be days that do not go to plan and we have to be able to be flexible around that. And so I have a rule called the two-day rule where if I have an instance where my day does not go to plan, I miss a training session, I miss my nutrition, I cannot make those same mistakes the following day. Do not replicate the same mistake that was just made. And I know one thing that has been a huge help in my journey of getting to the healthiest version of me has been accountability. And you may be in the situation where you do not want to walk this journey alone. And this is a big part of what physique development does. We work one-on-one with our clients to create a sustainable environment for them to reach their fitness goals. Our goal is to be the last coach that you ever need. We spend a lot of time with each of our clients teaching on how training, nutrition, cardio, and supplementation impact you as an individual because we are all different and we can read different things online, but in reality, there's going to be some small variances to each and everything because of you as the individual. So if you would like to work with myself or one of our amazing coaches here at Physique Development, you can apply at the link below. And that is a wrap for today's episode. I want to wish you the best of luck as you enter 2024 and attack the first 90 days of your fitness goals. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. We will be a tremendous help as you get into your fitness journey and leave us a comment about how much you enjoyed hanging out with me today. We'll see you in the next episode.
because the beautiful thing is, <laughs> I think everything's so beautiful today. I've said this so many <laughs> times in this episode. And I want to provide a free resource for you for the full, for blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Just talk, motherfucker. <laughs> Thought about it. 25 beautiful grams of protein. Okay, fine. We'll go back through it. God dang. Love me, love me. Say that you love me. Funny guy. All right, David. <laughs> and you may find that as an excuse. Doesn't matter to me because the reality. <laughs> I'll restart it. Now I'm just talking shit. F you. <laughs> F you. <laughs> this is the best episode he's ever edited. Next, we need to understand our baseline. At least getting that out of the way. <laughs> cut, 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 cut. <laughs>